Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second in our Out in the World, Ireland's LGBTQ plus diaspora lecture series. Um, we're joined tonight by a wonderful panel led by my colleague, Dr. Morris Casey. Morris. Thanks, Nathan. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. Good morning. Good night. Good afternoon, wherever in the world you find yourselves. Um, so welcome to this event, this conversation, uh, how to create your own queer Irish diaspora organization. Um, before I really introduce the event proper, I'm going to uh, bring in my colleague in the Vancouver Consulate, Adam Duffy, who's going to say a few short words about the work of the Consulate. Thanks very much, Morris. Um, very excited to be involved in the Out in the World lecture series, both as a representative of the Irish government here in Vancouver and a member of the queer community myself. Um, the Department of Foreign Affairs is incredibly proud to support the organisations here today, Sydney Queer Irish and Vancouver Queer Irish, as well as many other diaspora groups through funding initiatives like the Emigrant Support Programme. The Emigrant Support Programme, or ESP, is an annual scheme that Irish diaspora organisations can apply through um, their nearest consulate or embassy. Uh, the aim of the fund is to support organisations that run events and programmes that support the Irish community in some way, provide them with some need or some uh, support as we've seen with the COVID pandemic, there was additional funding released for organizations that are helping the local diaspora in their communities. Um, in 2020, uh, the ESP program had a budget of 12.5 million euros and the fund has assisted hundreds of organizations across the globe and continues to each year. In 2020 alone, there was over 520 applications for the funding. Um, so we here in Vancouver, the Vancouver Queer Irish is a very new organization. So we're excited to see their first um, perfectly written, easily explained, fully costed uh, application for ESP in early 2022. If anybody who is here watching live or the recorded um, event, and they're looking for more information on the Immigrant Support Program, please go to the website dfa.ie slash global irish and click on the supporting new tab and the first box there is ESP and has all the FAQs and the application process easily explained there. Um, so thanks again very much and really looking forward to hearing from both Vancouver Career Irish and Sydney Career Irish here today. Thanks Mark. Great, thanks Adam. Um, so the idea for this event kind of came about because um, I'm the curator of the and the World exhibition, and I was very interested during the research to learn about the various the history of the various diaspora groups across the world. So, I guess the city with the longest history um, would be London, which has had uh, LGBTQ plus groups since around the 1980s. But um, another city with a long history has been Sydney, and it's great um, to be joined by Sydney Queer Irish, who also at least in their name at the very least, have also inspired uh, Vancouver Queer Irish. The idea for this event was really to bring those groups into conversation and to figure out what aspects of their experience and of the model and so on can hopefully inspire um, others to do similar groups and set up similar groups in their um, diaspora location. So to begin, I'm going to ask first, uh, team Sydney Couriers and then Team Vancouver Couriers to introduce themselves, um, just who you are, uh, your uh, committee role and whatever other details you might like to throw in. So we'll begin with uh, Loretta in Sydney. Hi, um, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Um, I'm here on Gadigal land uh, broadcasting from the Eora Nation. And I pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. And I'd also like to pay my respects to the queer Irish diaspora around the world who have been leading the way in, um, in our history and making us feel um, that we can and we do have a place in the Irish diaspora around the world. So I pay my respects to them as well and, and to, the, to the people that forged the way many, many years ago in Sydney, London and all around the world as they left Ireland. Um, I am the founder of SQI in 2010, and I'm currently serving as vice chair or vice president to the organisation. Thank you. Uh, Brian, if you want to jump in. 
Hi everyone, I'm Brian. I'm um, also on Gallagher land, um, just a few kilometres away from Loretta. Um, I'm currently the president of Sydney Queer Irish um, and I've been in Sydney for about eight years now and I'm originally from Wicklow, Ireland. Great. Uh, thanks, Brian. So over to uh, Vancouver Queer Irish, uh, Sarah, I'll, I'll bring you in. Hi, hey everybody. I just want to thank you, first of all, for hosting this event. Um, my name is Sarah, and I'm a general committee member. We're still sort of finding our feet here, or at least I am, in the committee. So it's just sort of general dog's body. Um, I've been in Vancouver since 20, 2006, um, and I've also spent a little bit of time in Sydney. So I'll be interested, very interested to hear what Sydney have to say and what they can teach us throughout this. Um, yeah, so thanks for having us. Dave. Hi, Sarah. And yes, again, thank you, uh, Morris, for putting this together. And lovely to meet Loretta and Brian uh, in person. We've only uh, virtually met so far, so um, really nice to see your faces. Um, my name is David Rowe. I am the uh, the current uh, president of uh, the Vancouver Queer Irish. Um, I moved here from Dublin, Ireland, uh, just over eight years ago, and. Um, yeah, the whole reason um, of, of putting this together was to just kind of like bring our community together here in Vancouver. And um, there's a great Irish community here in Vancouver and um, just really uh, looking forward to, to building that out, especially in the LGBTQ plus uh, community too. Great. Uh, thank you all for the introductions. I was reminded there when everyone was speaking, like what's the sort of last, uh, you know, kind of, uh, production of this type I've watched where there's so many people tuning in and speaking from different places around the world and it's just it's reminded me of Eurovision that's what I feel like I feel like the the Eurovision coordinator um so uh read the kind of the main part of this um event is going to be a conversation which I will lead and um we have some questions and I guess the first question is a very obvious one and it's for everyone and it's how did you get started where did the idea for setting up come from um and how did you find each other as well so I'll again I'll begin with Sydney for all questions then go to Vancouver but it's up to you guys who wants to jump in and answer so over to Sydney uh, initially we started um as a group of friends a group of queer Irish friends that sort of were brought together in the in the social scene in Sydney and um, it was through our exposure in events. Initially, it was through with uh, events at the DF, with through the uh, collaboration with the DFA um, in 2015, and we became more visible. We um, we marched in Mardi Gras, and then we also uh, marched in the Sydney St Patrick's Day parade. And it was events that like that that and and that exposure that opened us up to. Um, more Irish people in Sydney and then we formalised um, from being a small group who had just, you know, a couple of social events a year to a more formalised committee. And I joined um, probably two years after its inception. Um, I saw on social media, I believe on Facebook, that um, Sydney Queer Irish had this wonderful event for the marriage referendum in Ireland. And they were live streaming um, at, or I think it was, I don't know what time it was, Loretta, I think it was around midnight. Um, and unfortunately, it was such a success that I was queuing outside. I was like, let me in. Um, and then eventually I went to the first committee meeting and um, it kind of grew from there. Great, thanks. So at uh, Vancouver, the same question. Yeah, I um, we actually, we only started this year. Um, uh, the idea, uh, the, the first time that we were all put together was um, back in March of uh, 2021. Um, uh, one of the Irish and BC newsletters went out um, asking if there were current groups set up for the queer community um, within the Irish community here in Vancouver. And uh, myself and a, a friend um, who's on the board as well um, and everyone else on the board basically uh, reached out to uh, the consulate and said that they were interested. Um, I do believe that the initial um, ask for um, an existing group came from some contacts that the consulate had received from um, the Sydney Queer Irish actually. 
Um, there, I think there was a bit of communication about um, the upcoming Sydney, um, the World Pride happening in Sydney um, in 2023, and to see if there was any interest in other cities coming and joining in. Um, so yeah, that, that got the conversation going with us and uh, we've been running with it um, ever since then. Great, and actually, when did you guys get to meet in person first? Did you get to meet at that March? <laughs> We first met online in March um, mm -hmm. and we basically spent the first couple of months on Zoom calls with each other and then we met in person, I think it was late June, mm -hmm. it was the first time myself, Dave and the rest, the six of us in total to begin mm -hmm. with. Yeah, yeah it's pretty weird. And how many are there now? Seven. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Official. Lots uh, of interest. Crazy. Um, so. I guess coming back to what Loretta said about um, formalizing, and uh, I'm going to bring up a slide uh, which Loretta shared at me, uh, which shows Sydney Queer Irish's structure. Um, can you all see that okay, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, sorry, I'm after doing something off the screen. Um, I'll bring that back. Okay, that should work. Um, Loretta, if you want to kind of guide us through this and tell us about how you became, you know, going from something that was kind of founded in your home to becoming a, a formal organizational structure. I think um, it, it became more formal when we there was more and more interest to join the committee. There was a lot of people that wanted to get involved. You know, they saw the energy, they saw the fun that SQI was having and, you know, there was a need to formalise it as such because there was so much energy that you needed to harness. Um, and being a volunteer organisation, like the people have different strengths. Um, some people are, are more interested in sort of the social things and, and, and being involved in maybe their monthly events, whereas other people have got interest in grants and, and you know, strengths in grant writing, for example. Whereas there, and we've got another member who is incredible in um, in his design and graphic design. So he puts a lot of energy into our marketing and our web design. But um, there's also, as we've evolved and we've become more popular and there's been more and more events, um, we've had a need for social subcommittees, like for Mardi Gras, for example, and for our Paddy's, Paddy's Gay event, because there's a lot of organisation that goes into these events. So um, it's... It was kind of, it was there was a need to to set up an executive to to make and lead us through some of the bigger decisions and also to steer the ship because everybody's got ideas on how things should be done and um, it's about you know acknowledging those ideas and and making sure that everybody feels um, that they're heard um, but it's also about directing all that energy into um, you know making sure that. The, that the members are getting the better, you know, the better events and, um, but also not burning all your committee out. Cause again, you know, everybody's a volunteer and it's about, you know, divvying up the workload. So this is, this is, this is our model and this works for us. Um, and it can be adapted for any group around the world. Like if VQI have only got seven people at the moment, it's probably good to have it, an executive and then the general members. And it's also a good way for general members when they do come in and um, when they do start up in the, on the committee, they can sort of see what the roles are, you know, what the secretary does, what the treasurer does every year and the reporting that they need to do as a formalised um, group uh, that they, they can move between those, those areas and they can sort of see and work out if, you know, they do want to become potentially the treasurer or the secretary as we move through our AGMs once a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you find it generally easy to kind of encourage people to get involved and, and how have you done so? I think there's a lot of people, like over the years, it's been easy to attract members to the committee. It's a little bit harder to keep members um, coming back year after year, but it's also harder to get you know, people bring a sense of enthusiasm, but then they realise there's a lot of hard work in running an organisation like SQI. Like there's a lot of unpaid hours that go into running it, like especially for the executive, the secretary, president, the vice president, you know, there's a lot of 
work that goes in to just to keep that structure and also to keep your members, give them, you know, options on different events, um, but also just getting, getting, you know, the behind the scenes stuff, the stuff that keeps the, that committee going. There's a lot of work in it. So you can attract members and then people go, oh, my God, there's actually a lot of work. So, you know, we get a lot of people coming through, um, you know, that, that maybe come to the, the committee meetings but then realise, oh, they just want to be more of a social member and, that, and that's fine too. We need, we need all sorts of members. So um, thankfully we have had, for I think the committee that we have currently, most of those members would be on maybe for four, four to five year plus at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our retention so then, is... Yeah. Uh, so then turning to um, Vancouver, what... Uh, have you guys adapted this Sydney Courage model or have you guys worked with your own model and, and where have your kind of ideas been for kind of structuring and so on? Um, yeah, we've adopted a similar model. Um, Loretta was very kind to share a lot of uh, the kind of setup documentation with us, which was very helpful for us um, getting set up, um, especially because we're all sort of isolated from each other. Um, and we, yeah, we do, we have kind of like a president, a vice president, treasurer, secretary, got social media person, and then a couple of committee members. So it's not dissimilar. I'd say it's actually quite similar <laughs> uh, to what Sydney have. Yeah, good model. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to turn into uh, events and I'm kind of thinking that, um, you know, we're all, we're both, everyone's operating a different kind of city context, but also I guess different kind of context in terms of guidelines and what events you can really do and so on so i just wanted to kind of throw it up to everyone what in a sort of normal scenario let's say where you can kind of host any kind of event you want has been really effective in bringing people in and bringing members together um, and what also as a kind of sideline what have been kind of effective uh pandemic adapted events as well so again beginning with um sydney maybe brian you, if you want to come in yeah, I think um, our tentpole um, event each year is Mardi Gras, which is the Sydney Pride. Um, and I, prior to moving to Sydney, I hadn't really been to many Pride events, unfortunately. And I was just, when I went to my first Mardi Gras, I was like, oh my God. Um, it's unique in that it's held at nighttime. A lot of the Pride events throughout the world together are held um, during the day. And um, I think as seeing Sydney Queer Irish's entry, um, I think, like I think usually 500,000 people attend um, Mardi Gras so just to have that kind of exposure and the work that Loretta and all the team did for the um, for the entry that I saw just blew everyone away so um, just having that exposure really we get heaps of messages on in, um, social media after and um, so just ensuring that you know if in your uh, particular city if you do have a, an event that kind of would give that traction and um, you'll see that there'll be so many um people that'll contact you after and just ensuring that you um then gather that information and make sure that they sign up to the mailing list and um, which loretta's done such a wonderful job of and um, then keeping that mailing list going just giving out information and you'll be so surprised to see that you'll um get people coming to all kinds of different events and um, I suppose very recently we've um, with a local gay bar called the Earth, uh, the Imperial. Um, uh, we started doing St Patrick's Gay, um, which has just been one of our uh, biggest events. I think aside from Pride, and um, I think the first year it was the biggest event ever um, for the Imperial, um, which is probably a, a, a bit of a, a stereo worrying stereotype. But we certainly had a, a wonderful time, and um, I think it's gone been going from strength to strength um this year we kind of had to scale it back we were incredibly lucky that during the pandemic australia initially um had a very good run of things and um, we just really paired back that event um to ensure that we were following all guidelines and we had maybe i'd say 10 percent of the people that we usually would at that event but we still had a great time um, so it's just ensuring that you kind of have those 10 pulls and then following up with people ensuring that you're contacting them throughout the year and going from there, really. Great. Um, thanks, Brian. A lot to think about there. Loretta, is there anything you want to kind of guide us through in this I think, extremely uh, I, full calendar? Yeah, definitely. I think if, when you're starting up a group like SQI or BQI, 
it's important to have a mix of um, both paid and non-paid events. Um, this is just roughly a sort of a, a calendar. We do a monthly social or a monthly catch up. Some months are busier than others. You can see February and March are very, very busy for um, SQI. And then we sort of taper it off to some just social events, one, one social event a month. And they should be a combination of, you know, different things that are, that are paid and unpaid um, just to attract members, just, you know, so you're not always going to the bars, you're not always going to the clubs, you're attracting different members, older members, younger members, people with kids, people with dogs. Um, you're really sort of opening up your member um, events. And I think that's really, really important. Like, you know, everybody wants to be Irish for Mardi Gras and for Paddy's Gay and for our boat party. It's very, very heavily subscribed and they're often sold out events. So it's important for us to also have a mix of other events. And I also have included um, the other events that we're involved in that we either volunteer at or we're um, active members or we participate in. Events like the Darkness Into Light Walk, for example, um, is very important to, our, to, to the committee and also to our members. So we volunteer at that event and we also participate. We're also involved with Queer Screen, um, film festivals, the Irish Film Festival, um, and, and, and different events with um, the Irish community here, the broader Irish community. So it's important to have a mix, a broad mix, and that's what I would say. You know, it's not all about those big, you know, Mardi Gras events or um, it's, a, it's about actually being active members. Um, and I think that's really important as a small, you know, you are essentially a small community group within a broader Irish diaspora. So, you know, being part and being visible, I think, is really important. Um, thanks, Loretta. Uh, there's a few things I want to <clears throat> come back to there, but uh, I'll first turn over to Vancouver. And I guess you guys have the um, kind of interesting scenario where you, you're in that sort of emerging from um, restriction stage. And I suppose you guys will also need to start thinking for, of a good St. Patrick's Day pun. Um, like St. Patrick's Day. I know the Vauxhall Tavern in London has Sodom and Bagara, so you're going to need another one. Um, so, but yeah, tell us about the kind of events you've been doing and uh, and what your plans are. Yeah, so um, obviously we're not as uh, established as uh, Sydney Queer Irish yet. Um, so looking at it from kind of like a newer um, Irish, Irish diaspora, um, uh community where we're kind of we do we have been um focusing on events where we can meet outside obviously with uh with restrictions easing it's it's easier to do them inside but um our first event we had uh late june and we were trying we coincided it with uh dublin pride so dublin pride isn't really um celebrated here but we just thought hey it's it's happening back home this weekend so let's all meet up together this weekend here in vancouver and uh, we had a great turnout for that. Um, it also happened to be the hottest weekend of, uh, of the year, um, but still we had a great turnout, thankfully. Um, and since then, uh, we've had Pride in Vancouver just at the, uh, the end of July, start of August. And there were a lot of outdoor events happening for that. So what we did was we picked kind of three or four events that we wanted to um, almost piggyback off and and make sure that uh we we were kind of involving everybody and, and giving people options to come along so there was a pride art walk with some great local ins art installations all like all around the city that we could visit and check out um there was also the pride um run that happens every year the, the 10k run um and then on the actual pride weekend there was no parade happening unfortunately but we um, we did a decentralized parade where we just we got together as um, VQI and everyone was invited along to join us and kind of walk the route that we would have um, usually done as a parade and ended it down at the beach and had a bit of a, a tie-dye party down there. So that was our last kind of major uh, push for events. And we've actually looked ahead kind of similar to, uh, to your yearly plan there and planned out a, a, like a, a big event a month. Um, so we're looking to kind of like build some momentum there. Um, we've actually just partnered up with one of the, the major Irish bars here in Vancouver. 
and um, we're going to be doing a monthly kind of night there where we meet up and we're hoping that will build momentum over time. Great, yeah, is that Sarah that you want to bring in on events or? No, I think Dave sort of covered everything there. Yeah, we're looking forward to doing our sort of first more casual hangout in the bar. Um, mm. It definitely seems like it's easier for people to kind of come and go to the beach events. Um, we found that when there's a lot of logistics in play, we attract less people. <laughs> so it's easier if there's just sort of everybody come along and have a few drinks um, rather mm. than going, going for a run. It was a bit harder to get people out but yeah. next year. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was. Hey, go ahead. I was going to say, and we we have um, been toying with the idea of some larger events where we we charge um, we charge in for these events, uh, similar to what SQI do uh, for some of their bigger events. Um, but uh, we just need to make sure that everything's in place um, and we're fully set up before we uh, we start doing those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember being amazed uh, looking at your Instagram at how much turnout you had at one of the events because it didn't just seem like the hottest weekend of the year it seemed like the hottest weekend on record <laughs> so I thought yeah. that was amazing it showed uh, people really wanted to, to get out and meet up I yeah, wanted to cool. just quickly uh, bring up a um, one of uh, the posters that Loretta sent me for one of your events because thinking with both the Vancouver and the Sydney answers Loretta am I reading this right that you this is an event held at a place called the Gaelic Club or is That's that correct. the main event? Yeah, the Irish National Association is a, um, a club in Surrey Hills here and it's got deep roots in uh, the Irish community. And we have, we're very, it's, I liken it to a, uh, almost like a um, community centre in Ireland, I guess, because it's where, you know, it's where you go to learn Irish. There's, um, you know, there's a support agency that works out of there called the Irish Support Agency. And it's, it's a club basically that we've been very, very, very lucky to have a long relationship. And it's where actually I had that first, very first big event, the marriage equality referendum event. Um, so it, 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 it's an incredible, like partnering with pubs and clubs and building relationships has been very, very important for us. And, you know, for VQI to also partner with the pub, it's great because it gives you essential the central meeting spot, you know, we have our um, committee meetings there and um, we get ready for Mardi Gras there. It's it's right in the city and we're very, very lucky to have, you know, a place like the Gatlet Club to to come back to and have our parties there. Yeah, and that kind of brings to mind, I, I guess I wanted to ask about, um, you know, how you find, how you both found, um, I know Vancouver, you guys are a bit earlier in your uh, journey, but how you both find kind of interacting with the broader Irish community, broadly defined within um, Sydney and within Vancouver. Yeah, I think for me, I, um, sorry, I go ahead, Loretta. No, no, go ahead, bro. Um, I think for me, I initially came over to Sydney. Um, I had no idea um, how uh, how big of the gay culture was here and um, I actually used my first year or two just to kind of explore have fun and travel and I actually shied away from the Irish um, the, the broader Irish community and then after my second year here I was I found myself I was getting a little bit homesick and that's when I stumbled across um, Sydney Queer Irish and um, I just can't believe like as Loretta said the Gaelic Club I was not expecting it to be so welcoming. Um, they have posters on the wall that stipulate that um, absolutely everybody is welcome. Um, for Mardi Gras, they, um, we implement um, genderless bathrooms and it's just this um, small little club in the middle, in the heart of Sydney. And it's just such a wonderful place that where everybody is welcomed. And even through all of our events, most recently, we did the Darkness into Light um, walk with um, Crave Podrick, um, a local GAA club, Irish GAA club, obviously, here. And they're all so lovely and welcoming. And um, it's just really, it's really heartwarming to see. And um, especially during a pandemic as well, it's just lovely to see the community get together and just welcome absolutely everybody. I was just going to, to add to that. I think, you know, like we're very lucky um the the consul general that we had here in sydney on feeney who's just returned or he's gone to a new posting in paris 
he started up a breakfast program for the Irish community groups here called La Kayla, and that was a great opportunity. We, you know, over the years we've met many um, at various consulate events, met many other, you know, presidents, vice presidents, leaders within the Irish community, and we've always been very welcome. And I think that's due to the fact that we have actively put ourselves out there. We are visible. Um, and we're also, I think we've proved in the last 10 years that we're here to stay. We're not, you know, just a fly by night. We're not just doing um, events for Mardi Gras. We're doing a series of different events. We're being involved in, in, in groups like Darkness Into Light and also the Island Funds here where they're raising money and the Island 5K Walk. We volunteer at events um, and we are visible in the community. And we have got a reputation as, as giving back. So um, the Sydney St. Patrick's Family Day, for example, we have, um, when we've been doing our working bees for Mardi Gras, we've also done working bees for them. So we've got our members creating different props and visual guides for those to use at their festival. And we're just donating back into other community groups. And I think that's been really important, um, not just to be insular within your community, you have to actually be visible and to give um, give back to the Irish community. I think that's been very important for us. Thanks, Rita. And, and to kind of turn then to Vancouver, but kind of coming back on what you guys said about your partnership with this Irish pub, whether you've had um, interactions with broad Irish community groups yet and, and how you kind of went about finding the right Irish pub to, to partner with. Yeah, not just with um, the Irish pub, but there are lots of Irish groups here um, within the community that are just all, all about kind of building that sense of community, no matter what part of it you're from. Um, we, we have a board member that's part of the, the ISSC, the, um, the Irish uh, Sports uh, League here in Vancouver, and um, we we've heard from a lot of like Irish owned businesses and, and everything just at, at the more kind of um, the, the more we're getting our name out there, the more um, feedback we're getting in regards to like positive feedback and, and more organizations wanting to kind of like partner with us. So um, this Irish pub uh, Donlands that we're, um, that we're partnering with um they've kindly uh, decided to come on as part of a, like almost a sponsor of ours. Um, and uh, that's been absolutely fantastic. It's one of the most popular pubs here in Vancouver. So hopefully we'll build a bit of traction from there. Um, all we need now is a, is a good Irish gay bar. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been, I think so far, pretty lucky. We've had uh, Irish NBC kind of support, like send our message out uh, every time we have an event. And uh, they even did some social media training with us, which has been really helpful. Um, and it's, it's just really cool to hear what Sydney are doing because I, you know, ideally we want to get to a position where we can start giving back rather than just, you know, getting people to promote us. Um, so that's really cool to hear. But uh, yeah, other, um, not just Irish uh, groups, but other queer groups have also been really helpful. There's a running group who've been uh, very good in uh, giving us some of their documentation to help us get set up as a society, which is tricky stuff. So. Yeah, we're sort of in, as you already said, we're in the position where we're, we're just sort of starting. So we're trying to get as much help as we can so far. And hopefully we'll be able to give back soon enough. And um, kind of thinking on that, that idea of, of setting up, what kind of supports have you guys sort of relied on? I mean, the immigrant support program clearly, but um, is there anything else that people should be aware of that that's kind of there to be uh, utilized? When we first when we when we first started out, we um, we approached uh, different Irish organisations, and over the years we've built um, relationships with those organisations. Um, there is smaller grants available, and um, and that I would imagine in 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 Vancouver there will be a grants available. There are corporate grants. There are all different types of grants um, for um, for the queer community. So it's about talking to those other community groups in, 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 in your area and also finding out what grants are available. Um, the EPS has been, you know, has brought us up to another level, like without the, oh, sorry, the ESP grant. Um, we would not be doing the scale of floats that we do for Mardi Gras every year. Um, 
you know, that that has increased our visibility um, trifold. And but there is, you know, fundraisers doing a quiz, you know, a simple table quiz has brought in as much money as doing some of our bigger, very big party events. So you cannot, you know, running raffles and things like that on the night. It's it's about being creative and not always charging people in, but being creative on the night to get money, maybe silent auctions, um, quizzes, uh, different things like that will, will increase your money. But also membership. If you have a clear... Um, you know, yearly timetable that people can see, people who invest back into you, you know, and it, it doesn't have to be a, a lot, but, you know, if they can see I'm a member of this association or this group um, and, you know, they, they're willing to pay a nominal fee and that will get you started and that will get you going. Yeah, uh, Vancouver, do you guys have any other kind of things? Well, I think Loretta's pretty comprehensive there, but. Yeah, they, I, I mean, we, um, it, the consulate has been a great resource for us as well. Um, and the DFA um, and Adam and, and Frank there um, have been absolutely fantastic um, uh, answering any questions and giving advice as needed. Um, at the ESP uh, grant that Loretta mentioned there as well is, is available here, but um, we started up just after the application process for that ended, unfortunately. So, um, we're looking forward to, uh, to be fully set up um, and, and have the application ready first thing uh, in 2022. Um, so that next year, then we can really run with um, some larger scale events. We're looking to hopefully have a, a float in the, the Irish, uh, the Paddy's Day Parade, if it actually happens uh, next year, and definitely the Pride Parade. Cool. One thing um, as well, kind of not... Uh, not thinking forward, but thinking backwards. One thing that I thought that the London Irish LGBT network have, have done a lot of work on, which is really interesting, are like recording oral histories. And so, you know, by setting up places like London Irish LGBT network have like um, brought in older members who have a, a different generational experience, a different generational history. Actually, as part of my research for the exhibition, I got to listen to some of those interviews and they were really useful. So have either of you guys thought about that idea about... Um, you know, tracing the history of the, the LGBTQ plus diaspora in Sydney or Vancouver? And have you kind of learned about that uh, just through your work? So I'll start with Sydney, you guys. I think, um, you know, we, uh, we talked a lot about this with you, Morris, and, and, you know, the original Sydney Queer Irish and, the, and where they came from. And when we first came back to March in 2015, you know, we engaged with those original Sydney Queer Irish and brought those to the forefront. They led our parade. Um, so we, we, have, we have met with those older members and, you know, they do come back from time to time depending on what events we're running and we're in contact with those members. So we do have, we do have relationships with those. And also through the work of the consulate and, and through also the research that you've done, you know, we have learned quite a lot um, about the history here in, in, in Sydney and, and in Australia more broadly. Great. Um, and then kind of coming to Vancouver, I know when, when we first met, I kind of presented you guys with the story of Bridget Call, and I said, please, you know, adopt this woman as your patron saint. Um, but tell me more, what, have you guys had uh, any plans like to record that history or to, to work more on it? That story absolutely fascinated us. Um, we absolutely loved it. And um, we, we haven't had the, the time or the capacity to really kind of make any progress on, on recording any, any other stories, fantastic stories like that here in Vancouver, but it's definitely on the cards. Yeah, we definitely want to have um, people from all walks of life, um, age groups and everything come along and hear their stories. It would be fantastic to really build a, a good, um, um book of that really yeah and i think that's just kind of it's a thing that will happen naturally as you guys just continue expanding and growing and, and uh, so on um there is, actually there is, yeah, go ahead adam in there. there is a group um the irish embassy in collaboration with the irish women's network here in vancouver are running a project called the story of the irish in bc it's kind of a community mapping project to look at the history of 
um, Irish people in BC and particularly reaching out to Irish people who, um, you know, who have recently arrived in Vancouver or whose families came to BC in general, like, uh, you know, hundreds of years ago and kind of getting their story told. And then they're creating a big um, a, a website for that that will have um, like the mapping project. So you'll be able to search, you know, um, by, you know, family name or by county or things like that. So hopefully through that, they'll encounter some stories of the kind of queer Irish diaspora. The other thing about that though, I think generally speaking in Canada, Irish um, migration to Canada has traditionally been to the West and the kind of Eastern Canada migration has been much more recent. So I think there probably will be um, stories of that, but I think um, it'll, we're really, really excited to see what the stories in Irish BC kind of ends up with with their project and hopefully there'll be some overlap there. And from that then maybe Vancouver Queer Irish can look then specifically to doing one that focuses particularly on the, on, on the queer diaspora here. Yeah, um, great. Uh, another thing I was thinking of there, uh, one thing that really uh, amazed me um, just speaking with Sydney Queer Irish was uh, your work um, with the Indigenous drag queens in Sydney. And I think that that's a really interesting model of like just engaging with the broader um, LGBTQ plus community, uh, which I think was really interesting. And I wonder if, um, Loretta, you could just tell people a bit more about how that, that kind of collaboration came about. That was a, that was a really, that was a, uh, an incredible time. So when we first did our Paddy's Gay event a few years ago now, um, we uh, we purposely met with a number of Indigenous drag queens um, and the Aboriginal Australian and Indigenous population has got this um, very strong history with the Irish people. Essentially back in the day it was, you know, no, no Irish, no black, similar to the London story, you know, you would see that. So the Irish and Aboriginal Indigenous populations here in Australia have got this history where they have a line together and they've worked together quite closely in the past. So um, I was lucky enough to meet this incredible drag queen called Miss, jo Miss Josie Baker and she had just been crowned um, Miss Indigenous First Nations. So I floated this idea with her that she could come and perform at Patty's Gay um, with other Indigenous drag queens and they would perform Irish-inspired numbers. So, you know, and we also, on that night, um, I appeared as um, St. Patrick and I passed over all the snakes from Ireland to this Indigenous drag queen in this uh, almost like a story uh, of, of, you know, how, how where did the snakes go when they left Ireland? Well, they went to Australia. So it was a, it was an incredible night, and um, you know it, it's a relationship that we've we've forged on. And those Indigenous drag queens come back and perform at our events, and uh, and Josie has since come back and been choreographer for us for our Mardi Gras for the last couple of years. So it's it's these relationships that we're building with the First Nations community here in Sydney. Um, and I think that's really important too. Um, so yeah, that 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 was that was our engagement, and it and it continues to be. You know, part of our story is engaging with the indigenous communities here in Sydney. Yeah, um, I think it's a. I think that's just so cool, and I think it's a it's a great um, model for people to look at. You know, not just affinities with different diasporas, but with First Nations groups and so on within uh, wherever you find yourselves um i guess kind of to, we're coming to a close if there are any questions from an audience please feel free to drop them in but i guess i wanted to bring us around to the end by just uh asking what every everyone what your plans are for the future um with uh your your queer irish groups and uh what you know how are you how do you foresee the kind of future uh, panning out? Actually, that's that's too difficult a question for anyone in the world at the moment. So let's just stick with what are your future plans. So, um, Brian, we'll start with you. Um, thanks, Morris, for this wonderful event. Um, I think just navigating um, as we emerge, hopefully emerge out of lockdown in the next few weeks, I think um, getting us kind of 
back up and running again and um, hopefully continuing as president for um, the next year or two if I'm voted back in and then um, holding a, a big event for the World Pride which um, I think David mentioned earlier and um, Sydney are hosting in 2023 so that really leads into kind of a global Irish that obviously speaks to us and um, so yeah fingers crossed we're looking forward to it. Great and Loretta? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we're, everything's on uh, moving towards World Pride, along with you know our, our monthly uh, social events. But I'm hoping to to engage, you know, with and, and invite all the queer Irish from diaspora around the world back into Sydney. And to, I think I'll give you the date now: Sunday, March fifth. Uh, you can come and march with SQI very, very proudly as we uh, as we cross the iconic Harbour Bridge here in Sydney. So Sunday, March fifth, twenty twenty three get your tickets, start putting your pennies away and uh, you'll be all very, very welcome here in Sydney. Great. Um, so uh, Vancouver, I'll start with Sarah. But I think just sort of getting to World Pride in Sydney is, is definitely one of our goals uh, and maybe even to host it someday here. You know, Pride is massive here in Vancouver, so it seems like it could we could be a contender um for me i think it's just more events and more engagement um, and just sort of really getting ourselves fully set up and beating the pandemic and being able to have more uh in-person things uh yeah and then we just have a few events sort of coming up over the next few months i might let dave talk about that dave yeah of course yeah thanks sir yeah uh ultimate goal World, uh, World, World Pride in Sydney. Um, we'll definitely be there March fifth, twenty twenty three. Um, but in the in the meantime, yeah, just fully getting set up. Uh, the monthly events that we kind of have planned out, we just need to uh, to really start focusing on those. Um, we are starting to do like a monthly meetup at um, at our our local club there, uh, Thirsty Third Thursdays. Um, we also want to do some cross community events with some of the other um, the Irish communities uh, here. Um, we want, would like to get together with the um, maybe the, the Irish dancing communities here and do like a bit of a gaily. Um, maybe have a, a sports day with some of the sports uh, the sports teams here, the Vela football teams, um, and just having having more of a presence um, here in Vancouver within the Irish community and. Uh, outside of it in the in the lgbtq community as well um we'd love to would ultimately would love to have like a like i think sydney have done this already but uh like a queen of ireland screening at one of our cinemas here that would be a, a great event um and in the short term as well i know there's a few of our board members that are going to be home in ireland at christmas and we're looking to put together a bit of a um like a meetup at the George, uh, one of the nights that we're all back and have, uh, we'll be there. We'll do a bit of a meet and greet, answer any questions about Vancouver that people have. And uh, yeah, that's that's best case scenario now if uh, everything else goes well with, um, <laughs> with the pandemic. Great. And I'll actually ask Adam, can you tell us any exciting concert plans? Um, yeah, some, some very exciting plans for concert. Uh, we actually, because we opened in 2019 and we then, with everything that happened since then, haven't had an official opening of the consulate, so that's happening in September. Um, but in general, I think in, in regards to this, we're really excited to you know, be working with Vancouver Queer Irish. I mean, they had just got established just before I arrived in here and I actually spoke to David and, and Karen um, back when I was in Dublin, so before I even came over. So, um, really looking forward to keeping on working on that relationship, being able to support them as much as we can, and yeah, just making sure that the you know the rest of the Irish community that we're well interconnected with, you know, knows about them and that they can do those events like you know with the the Gaelic and um, everything else. The other thing that I I, I also try and make it to <laughs> um, World Pride in Sydney. I think it was funny that um, SQI's very first event was for the marriage referendum, and I didn't know that, but I did happen to be in Sydney during the time of the marriage referendum results, it's kind of ironically. Um, so yeah, the, the consulate I think is um, you know, always open to helping any Irish uh, community as well. And that goes for across the globe, anybody who is watching this, um, who has any interest in setting up an Irish diaspora group, 
be it a queer group, be it um, something outside of that or related to that, um, getting in touch with the, uh, the consular or embassy, whichever one um, covers your area, is is one of the most important first steps. And you know, we're, we're always kind of excited to have Irish community groups setting up. So um, yeah, we're, we're more than happy to help. And the last thing I'll say as well, because I was supposed to do it at the start, and Loretta then ended up reminding me is that I'm obviously coming to you from the, the Consulate General of Ireland in Vancouver, which is situated on the traditional territories of the Musqueam, and Squamish, and Tsleil Waututh two nations here in Vancouver. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, I've had a lot of fun. I imagine we'll have even more fun on the 5th of March 2023 when we're all in a pub uh, in Sydney and Loretta's buying pints. So uh, thanks, everyone for uh, joining and uh, thanks for people who watched this back, you know, um, uh, I hope this is, will be of some help. I hope that uh, some people get uh, some support and info out of it. So that's all for me. Uh, goodbye, everyone. I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, enjoy yeah. the rest of your days. Good morning, Sydney, uh, and enjoy your evening, Vancouver. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Mars. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Bye. Thank you.